What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Friday, August 2nd, 2024, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now, it is 1224 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from the Middle East. So, I want to update you on the situation with Iran and Israel. So U.S. intelligence sources indicate that Hezbollah and Iran are planning to launch thousands of missiles in an assault expected to last several days. Okay, so thousands of missiles and it's going to last several days. And U.S. officials believe that a significant Iranian attack will be carried out against Israel within the next few days okay so get prepared guys make sure you have everything you need make sure you have a nuclear war survival plan check out my nuclear war survival videos make sure you have a fallout shelter close by make sure you have a bug out bag make sure you have food and water at least for three months and make sure you have a means of self-defense so this is going to be a lot more massive than the attack we saw in april and the AFP news agency is reporting that Iran is going to lead the initial attack against Israel with the help of Iraq, Yemen, and Syria. Apparently, civilian targets will first be attacked, followed by military targets, and then Hezbollah will respond in a massive second wave. That's what AFP is reporting Several sources have reported that the IRGC plans to use the Fatah-1 hypersonic missile for the first time. Okay, this was reported by Yediat News in Israel. So Iran planning to use potentially hypersonic missiles in this attack on Israel with thousands of missiles expected to last several days and the Israeli government has ordered all air, land, and sea troops to be ready for battle immediately. And Iran has officially informed the UN of its intent to carry out a retaliatory action of what they call self-defense against Israel in accordance with Article 51 of the UN Charter. And apparently this time, the Ayatollah Khomeini, the supreme leader of Iran, did not use the word punishment, but rather used an Islamic word meaning blood for blood when he spoke of settling accounts with Israel for the assassination of Hanie. Okay. And they did raise the red flag in Tehran. Okay. Last time they raised a black flag. This time they raised a red flag. The red flag is the worst one. The red flag means that in their eyes, innocent blood was spilled and they have to avenge the innocent blood that was spilled. Okay. One U.S. official predicts several difficult days ahead and says that the U.S. is taking steps to help the IDF intercept incoming threats. And U.S. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham calls for the United States to support significant strikes against Iranian oil and gas infrastructure if they continue with their planned large-scale missile attack against Israel. And Israel is reportedly considering the possibility of a preemptive strike on Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, to basically take him out before Hezbollah responds with Iran. And last night, Biden and Netanyahu had a phone call and they discussed the deployment of additional U.S. military assets to support Israel's defense against ballistic missiles and drones. So looks like the U.S. is going to beef up their presence in the Middle East. And this update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply is doing a discount on their one month emergency food supply. And to get the deal, you got to go to preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. This is a one month freeze dried food supply, it has a 25 year shelf life. Normal price is $237. They've dropped it down to $177. So 
So that's a savings of $60. And it's all packed within two rugged water resistant buckets. Free shipping is included. $177 for one month of food. Where are you going to find a deal like that? They also have a general store and they're always running discounts in their general store on various prepping and survival items. They have everything from MREs, potassium iodide to survival seeds. And to get to their general store, you got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo at the top of the page when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com. And you'll see when you get there, they have everything you can imagine. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $60 off the My Patriot Supply one month emergency food supply. That's $180 for one month of food, free shipping included. The link is in the description below this video. And also check out their general store. They have everything you can imagine prepping and survival related, and they're always running various discounts there. And ongoing assessments by U.S. defense officials believe that a potential Iranian retaliatory strike will be similar to their attack against Israel on April 13th, but with this attack being much larger and more complicated than before, including the possibility of a coordinated attack by Hezbollah and other Iran-backed groups from multiple fronts. Officials are also deeply concerned that this attack could be simultaneous with widespread targeting of U.S. bases and troops in Syria, Iraq, and possibly other countries in the Middle East, okay? So they're going to hit our bases too, guys, okay? So this could be it. This could be the beginning of World War III, okay? It's not going to stop. It's only going to get worse. I feel like this is deja vu, okay? Just a few months ago, we were in the same situation, and then we had culinary night, okay? But this time, instead of two or 300 Iranian missiles, we're talking about thousands of missiles from multiple areas, from Lebanon, from Iran, the Iranian proxies, and also the Houthis, plus drones, hypersonics. Guys, there's no way that the U.S. is going to be able to intercept all of that, okay? Even last time, Biden said that it was basically a miracle that they were able to intercept everything that Iran launched at Israel. And it took the coordinated effort of half a dozen allied countries like the UK, France, Jordan, the US, Saudi Arabia, and then Israel, all of them working together. And I believe Italy as well, all of them working together with fighter jets, with warships, with land-based air defenses to try to shoot down just two or 300 missiles and drones that Iran launched. Now multiply that times three or four or five, okay? A thousand, two thousand, three thousand. There's just no way that they're going to be able to intercept all of that, okay? And the problem is with our administration is we're just sitting around and waiting for Iran to strike, okay? That is the stupidest thing. We have an opportunity now to strike Iran and strike Hezbollah and strike all the proxies. But instead, we're just sitting around and waiting for Iran to attack God's chosen people, God's chosen land. OK, we're just sitting around and doing nothing about it when we have the resources and the experience to eliminate the Ayatollah Khomeini and eliminate all his military capabilities. We have an opportunity to do it now and we're not doing it. We're just sitting around waiting for Iran and its proxies to launch thousands of missiles at Israel. This is ridiculous, guys. This is absolutely despicable, okay, that our government is just sitting around and waiting for this to happen. And on top of that, probably uh, telling Ned and Yahoo not to respond too strongly afterwards. I mean, it's just despicable, guys. Okay, God is not happy. I can tell you that. And high-ranking ministers in Israel have been rushed into underground bunkers. This was last night. And regular members of the parliament who do not get evacuated to bunkers were given satellite phones in the event of communications failures. 
And apparently today, emergency satellite phones were distributed to all Israeli ministers, okay? So continuity of government plans are in place in Israel. And there's more flight cancellations. We have Air India canceling all flights to Israel until the 8th of August. And Italian Airlines suspended all flights to Israel, okay? And the British military will deploy forces to Israel to support the coalition defending Israel at the request of the U.S., so the U.K. sending more forces there. Egypt has announced the closure of its airspace and is threatening that any plane that tries to enter its territory without permission will be intercepted on the spot. Okay, so Egypt is basically siding with Iran or at least playing neutral because Iran threatened any country that is going to help Israel with any possible counterattack or any possible uh, intercepting activities like flying fighter jets over their airspace to shoot down missiles. Iran is threatening to attack them. Okay, so it's possible that Iran could launch missiles at Jordan, at Saudi Arabia, you know, any country that helps Israel in intercepting these missiles. Okay, and remember that we have a ton of oil in Saudi Arabia. We have a ton of oil fields there and all over the Middle East that Iran could strike. Remember a couple of years ago when Iran launched missiles at Saudi Arabia and they took out like 50 percent of the refineries? They could do that again. They can do a lot of things. So uh, get prepared, guys. This is really going to escalate. Um, it's not going to get any better. It's only going to keep escalating until we have a full-blown World War III situation, okay? And the Israeli Broadcasting Authority is saying that the Iranian response may target bases in the center of the country, unlike the attack in April. And Hezbollah is reportedly transporting senior staff and military equipment out of Beirut for fear of Israeli strikes. And the IDF Home Front Command has designated several radio stations for emergency broadcasts in the event of a major attack on Israel in the coming days. And Venezuelan opposition leader Maria Karina Machado is now in hiding after being threatened with arrest. She called on Thursday for protests in every city in Venezuela to denounce the disputed re-election of Nicolas Maduro. We must remain firm, organized, and mobilized with the pride of having achieved a historic victory on July 28th and the awareness that to claim victory, we also go all the way, Machado said in a video post on social media. The world will see the strength and determination of a society determined to live in freedom. Wow, strong words. So I think Maduro is on the way out. It's just a matter of time. Now, we are hearing unconfirmed reports that Russia is now sending troops there and Wagner forces to try to quell the uprising. But I don't think they're going to succeed, guys. Russia is spread thin. They have enough on their plate with NATO and Ukraine. So Russia is probably not going to send a whole lot. And there's just too many people in Venezuela that want to see Maduro out. So it does appear that Maduro is going to leave, but it might take some time. He's probably in a bunker somewhere. And in anticipation of severe weather in Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency for 54 counties including Bay, Jackson, Walton, Gulf, Liberty, Franklin, Holmes, Washington, and Calhoun. The region faces a significant threat of heavy rainfall with at least 12 inches expected over the next seven days. And guys, there's a tropical storm heading towards Florida. I don't know if that's because of the tropical storm or something else. We currently have U.S. nuclear forces on high alert. We have two presidential doomsday planes up in the air right now. We also have two B-52 nuclear bombers airborne, and we also have a nuclear war command and control plane in the Gulf of Mexico, and those planes are responsible for remotely launching all of our Minuteman 3 ICBMs, and they can also communicate with our submerged nuclear-armed submarines. But here you can see one doomsday plane over Missouri and Kansas, 
and one over Kentucky. To see two doomsday planes in the air is very unusual. And one of them took off from Texas earlier this morning and went all the way to Virginia, did a couple loops over West Virginia. So this thing is just loitering, guys. Okay, it is on high alert. That's called the National Airborne Operations Center. That's where the president, the vice president, and the top generals can command the entire U.S. military from the air, including our nuclear arsenal. We also have another one that took off from Stratcom, and it's currently meeting aerial refuelers over Missouri, guys. Okay, so when these things refuel over air, that means that they're planning to stay up in the air for a very long time. You see, it took off, and then as soon as it took off, it's getting aerially refueled. All right, so this thing is going to be up in the air for a while, but this definitely means that our nuclear forces are ready for a worst case scenario. And yesterday we had data being transmitted over the primary nuclear war frequency in the United States. They were transmitting encrypted data all day yesterday. Let me just play a sample of that for you. It, you can't really hear anything because it's just you know encrypted so unless you have the encryption the decryption algorithm you're not going to be able to do anything with this but you can hear this like static noise like a fuzz noise So this was transmitting all day yesterday, most of the day, and it stopped overnight. And that's clearly a sign that our nuclear forces are preparing for a worst case scenario. And I will be monitoring the nuclear forces over the weekend. The next couple of days, I will be on maximum alert. OK, I do have a radio consultant on standby. So if things get crazy, he can help us understand what's going on from the radio side of things. OK, so I will be consulting with him over the next couple of days. And if anything unusual happens, you'll be the first to know. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're getting notifications. Also, follow me on Telegram and Twitter. The links to my Telegram and Twitter are in the description below this video. But I will be going live 24-7 again starting tonight. I'm going to restart the 24-7 streams. And again, if anything happens, I will be live, okay? Because this is a historic situation in a bad way. And yesterday we had two sub hunters off the coast of New York City near the Hudson Canyon off the continental shelf, just 300 miles off of New York City. Two sub hunters flying super low. And to me, this is a sign that there's Russian subs off of our coastline somewhere. They've been hunting for them the last week like crazy. And this morning, look what we have here. We have three sub hunters off the coast of South Carolina. There were two of them doing search grids right off the continental shelf off of South Carolina, probably about 200 miles off of South Carolina. They were doing this search grid here. Okay. And then a third one just got deployed from Jacksonville heading to this area right now. Okay, so potentially a sub off of South Carolina. Guys, remember, Russia has the Poseidon torpedoes. Those are the torpedoes that can carry 100 megaton warheads. Is it possible that Russia put them in position, maybe one off of South Carolina and then one off of New York City? So if things get crazy with Iran, then they're going to launch those Poseidon torpedoes into New York Harbor and just annihilate all of New York City or maybe send one into Kings Bay, Georgia, where we have several of our Ohio class subs and annihilate them all. It's very possible, guys. OK, so get prepared. And then we had this E2 Hawkeye flying off the coast of North Carolina. This is also a sub hunter plane flying very low. It was flying as low as just a thousand feet here. Okay, this was late last night. More sub hunters off of Florida yesterday. Here we have actually two of them that were uh, up in the air here off the east coast of Florida. And then more reconnaissance over Poland last night. 
Here we have Forte 15, an RQ-4 Global Hawk reconnaissance drone patrolling the Polish-Russian border. At the same time, there was a British RC-135 rivet joint reconnaissance plane patrolling off the coast of Kaliningrad and on the border of Russia and Lithuania. And then there was also a British sub hunter off the coast of Kaliningrad. OK, so you see where all the focus is by NATO. It's in this area here. OK, northern Poland, the Baltics, that's where NATO is focusing all their efforts right now. And Poland just announced that they're going to move 17,000 troops into the northeastern part of Poland and an extra mechanized brigade. OK, so they're not doing that for no reason, guys. OK, and Russia is in the third phase of their tactical nuclear war exercises right now. So, you know, it could all pop off at the same time. OK, Russia could attack Lithuania and Iran is going to attack Israel and then maybe China will attack Taiwan, although we haven't heard from Xi Jinping in almost a month now, so I would say that that's probably not going to happen for a little while. Uh, it does appear that Xi Jinping may be in a coma, and this was first reported by Jennifer Zhang. She's a Chinese activist journalist. She reported about a month ago that Xi Jinping had a severe stroke right before the third session of the Communist Party in China, and he was not able to preside over it, and instead... His buddy Kai Ki presided over the session. So for all we know, Xi Jinping could have a coma right now. But that's the latest breaking news that I have. I will be back later on tonight with more breaking news, and I will restart the 24-7 streams this evening. So until later on, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere. Culinary out.